Pinky, he played professional football in the CFL and lied about his age to go to war. When I was about six, we were on a family vacation in Palm Springs and I cracked my toenail when I stubbed it in the pool. My grandfather said he would fix it and then he ripped off the entire nail. We had to go to the hospital. I didn't really start spending a lot of time alone with my grandparents until I was 10 and my sister was 13 getting ready for her bat mitzvah. She had to attend services every Friday and I did not want to do that, so my parents would drop me off at my grandparents' apartment to hang out for a few hours while they went to synagogue with my sister so she could pretend to pray. Every Friday night would play out the same. I would plant myself on Zadie's Lazy Boy and turn on TGIF, ABC's Friday night programming, which consisted of Family Matters, Step by Step, and Hanging with Mr. Cooper, which are all shows that are, by any definition, fucking dope as fuck. My grandparents would make me a turkey sandwich on challah bread and pour me a glass of chocolate milk, and then sit with me as they tried their hardest to follow what the fuck was happening on these shows. Who's that guy? He's the dad. Who's the dweeby one? That's Steve Urkel. And what's that? A uh, robot? Yes, Steve Urkel built it. What's the robot doing now? It's pretending to be Steve to trick the girl he likes in a hooking up with him. This show has not aged well. Steve Urkel? Urkel. And what's the show called? Family Matters. Family Platters? My grandfather worked in the engine room of a battleship in the Royal Navy during World War II and, as a result, was more or less deaf. He loved being in the Navy. He talked about it like most guys talked about their fraternity years. They would hang out, smoke cigars, talk shit, all while floating in thousands of tons of metal around the war-torn Horn of Africa. He arrived at Normandy on D-Day Plus One, but his favorite story was about figuring out that if you broke your ration rum bottle after drinking it, you could say you broke it before and get a double ration. Anyway, he was deaf. Family crappers? He's saying family campers. No, I'm saying family matters. Stop yelling. Who's yelling? You're yelling. This would play out for about two hours straight, and as maddening as spending time with them was, I couldn't help but think they were entertaining. Because they grew up in the Depression, they would steal everything. Every time we went to McDonald's, they would empty the napkin dispenser and put them in a giant box that my grandfather kept in his van. If we were out at dinner and you heard my bubby say, oh, this is a nice plate, you knew the next time you ate at their place, you'd be eating off that plate because she straight jacked that shit. Knives, forks, you name it, they swiped it. Another thing I noticed was that my grandmother kind of had a wispy white afro that, when the light hit it, became completely see-through, leaving you with a very good idea of what my grandmother would look like if she was bald. And it was horrifying. I wrote three jokes about Bubby and Zadie that followed the basic structure we were taught. Say the premise or the thing you don't like. Say why you don't like that thing by making a humorous observation. And then do an act out, an impression of the target of the joke, bringing it all together. My grandparents were hard to impersonate, so I thought I'd just go with a generic old Jewish person voice. It was a safe but ultimately good call. The night came and my turn to take the stage was fast approaching. I honestly don't remember being that nervous, probably because I was 12 fucking years old and wasn't even mature enough to be nervous. I've definitely gotten more in my head as I've gotten older, and I marvel at how I used to just barrel into these situations without much fear or anxiety. Kids can do that. It's like those very young Chinese acrobats you see, flinging their little bodies in the air, being thrown around, completely unaware of the stakes. If those kids knew what a torn ACL was, they wouldn't be letting those motherfuckers toss their little asses around like that. And if I had known the pain and shame that goes along with putting yourself out there creatively and being rejected, I probably wouldn't have been so excited. But I didn't. So I was. I took the stage. The lesbian's eyes locked on me. So people ask me what the hardest part about being Jewish is. The persecution? The repeated attempts at systematic annihilation? Nope. The hardest part about being Jewish is the grandparents. They laughed. Thank fucking God they did, because if they didn't, I'd be one very frustrated video game store employee right now. I continued. My grandparents argue all the time, but they're both deaf, so they don't even know what the other one is arguing about. Time for the big quasi-anti-Semitic act out. Hey, Kelly, pass me a pillow. What? I'm an armadillo? Why would you call me this animal? What? I'm not wearing flannel. 